In this video, I'm gonna talk about the top five lenses that I use with my Canon M50. This will be your perfect buyer's guide if you're looking at buying a new lens for your M50 and you just don't really know where to start because these five lenses that I use cover pretty much every single focal range from ultra wide all the way to telephoto and everything in between. So I'm almost sure that after watching this video, you're gonna find the perfect focal length and the perfect lens for you. And if not, you'll at least get a better idea of what you wanna purchase. So definitely stay tuned and watch this whole video and let me know what lens you end up going with in the comments down below. Also, all these lenses and the adapter I use are gonna be linked down in the description. So if you wanna purchase one of these lenses, definitely go click one of those links. They are all affiliate links, so I will get a small commission of it, but it's no extra cost to you. So it'd really support me and help support the channel. Also, if you do like this video, go down and hit the like button, I'd really appreciate it. And if you're interested in budget cameras and budget lenses, that's pretty much what I make videos about on this channel, and I'm gonna have more M50 videos in the future. So feel free to subscribe if you're interested in that type of thing. So without further ado, let's get into this video. All right, so I'm gonna be going over each of the five lenses individually, and basically I'm gonna talk about what I love about the lens, you know, and what it's used for, and a couple things I don't like about it. And I'll be doing that for each of the lenses, and also for each of the lenses that I talk about, the lens that I'm talking about at the time will be the one recording me, so you'll kind of get a little bit of an example, but also show some examples with each lens of photos or videos that I've taken with it. The first one we're talking about is on the camera right now. It's the EF 24 to 105 millimeter F4. So this is a genuine Canon lens, so it's gonna have the really good Canon L lens build quality, but that also means it has the L series lens price. So this lens is one of the pricier lenses that I have in my kit. Now I actually scooped this lens up on Facebook Marketplace used for $450. So you can get it used for pretty cheap if you do look around and if you really search for a good price. But new, it's definitely, definitely the priciest lens out of these. But before you skip over this, there is reasons that it's an expensive lens. So. This is Canon's L-series lens, which means it's super sharp, even at its widest aperture. Uh, it also has image stabilization built into the lens, which is super useful for getting stable pictures and stable videos. And it has a really good focal range. So it's a 24 to 105 millimeter. So 24 millimeters is where it starts out at, at f4, and it goes all the way to 105 millimeters, which is uh, pretty zoomed in, it's a nice telephoto focal range, and it stays at f4 because this is an f4 constant aperture, which is super awesome. And now these focal lengths will be a little different depending on the adapter you use. And so I use with all these lenses a Viltrox speed booster. And so what the speed booster does is essentially kind of widen the focal range and add extra light into your image uh, because the Canon M50 is an APS-C size sensor camera. So it has a smaller sensor than a full frame sensor, which means you get kind of less depth of field, less low light performance. And so this adapter has a little piece of glass in it that widens the lens, adds light into your sensor, and essentially makes your M50 more like a full frame camera. And so I'm gonna link this Viltrox Speed Booster in the description. I would really, really recommend buying this to use with all these lenses that I'm gonna talk about because it adds better low light performance, it adds depth of field into your images, and really gives you that full frame look, which a lot of people really go for. And that's really one of the biggest downsides of the Canon M50 is that it's not a full frame camera. But if you don't have that, and you just have a regular Canon EFM to EF adapter, all these lenses I'm gonna talk about will work they'll just be cropped in 1.6 times. So all the focal lengths that I talk about, just multiply that by 1.6, and that'll be the real focal length of all these lenses. Either way, I've talked about some awesome things about the 24 to 105, and I'm sure you've seen some example photos and videos by now, but there is a couple downsides to this lens. And the first thing is the size and the weight. So on the Canon M50, this lens is pretty massive and super front heavy, especially because of how small the M50 is. And with the adapter in between, it makes it even longer. So really depending on your situation, this may may or may not be a big downside, but this lens is heavy and it definitely strains your hand with all that front heaviness when you're trying to hold the small grip of the M50. And that's really the biggest downside of this lens. So the EF24 to 105 millimeter is a fantastic lens, especially paired with a speed booster. This lens is super versatile and it's a great just walk around lens or a great travel lens just to bring with you. You got all sorts of focal ranges in there, anywhere from pretty wide all the way to pretty zoomed in. With image stabilization, there's not much to complain about. This is an awesome lens. All right, here we go. Next up, the lens we got on the camera right now is arguably one of the best beginner lenses for the Canon M50. It's really cheap. It is super sharp, super great, and uh, it creates amazing shallow depth of field, which I'm sure you can kind of see right now. I'm not super far from my background here, but I still create some good depth of field. And of course, I'm talking about the Canon EF 
50 millimeter f1.8. So right off the bat, this lens is $125 brand new, which compared to the last lens that I just talked about, this lens is like a steal, like it's super cheap compared to most other new lenses. And you might think for that cheap of a price, there would be a bunch of downsides that this just wouldn't be a very good lens. But honestly, I don't even know if I have a downside to this lens. This is definitely one of my favorite all around lenses for any Canon camera. And honestly, I'd recommend just picking up this lens no matter what. Like this is just a perfect lens at a perfect price point. So first things first, it's a 50 millimeter focal length, which with the speed booster, which I use on it right now, it makes it pretty close to actually 50 millimeters versus about 80 millimeters if you use a regular non-speed booster adapter. So at a 50 millimeter focal length, it's really good for portraits. It's not super telephoto, like, you know, you don't have to back up a hundred feet from someone to get like, you know, an upper body shot. It's a really, really good focal length for just walk around street photography, uh, for portraits, for, you know, anything like senior photos or portraits in a studio or really any type of people pictures. This is an awesome lens for because that focal length is really pleasing to faces. It doesn't distort the face very much at all. And it creates that amazing shallow depth of field. Right now I'm at F2, so I'm not even as low as it goes and the background's still kind of just washed away into blurriness. I mean, it looks super good. And it's seriously like hard to take a bad photo or video with this lens. I just, I really don't know if there's anything bad I can say about this lens. It's really sharp. Uh, it's not an L-series lens. You know, it's not like a 50 millimeter F1.2 L-series lens, which is unbelievably tack sharp. I mean, it's nothing like that, but you're never gonna complain that this isn't sharp enough. The autofocus is really fast. It's a genuine Canon lens, so it has Canon's build quality. It's gonna pair perfect with the Canon camera because they're meant to go together. I just, I really don't even think I can say a bad thing about this lens. So if there's one lens out of this list of five that I'm talking about that I recommend literally just going and buying, it's this lens right here. All right, next up right here, we have the Canon EF 16 to 35 millimeter F 2.8 L lens. Now I think there's three different versions of this lens. The one I have right here is the first generation which is honestly the one I recommend for the Canon M50 because it's the cheapest version and you're really not gonna notice a whole lot of difference. You know, especially with kind of a more budget camera, if you're planning on upgrading and you wanna be, you know, professional, you wanna have the sharpest, the best quality 16 to 35 lens, you could always go for the third version, which is really, really expensive, but obviously it's gonna be the best version of it. But honestly, I'd recommend this first version that I use right here. Before I talk about that, right now I'm at 35 millimeters and I'm using the Viltrox Speed Booster like I will with all these lenses, so I'm gonna stop bringing it up. But the Viltrox Speed Booster makes this about a full frame equivalent. So right now I'm at 35 millimeters and it's about an arm's length away from me. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom up to 16 just to show you how wide this lens gets. There we go. This is 16 millimeters. So this is the exact spot I was just at and now I'm like a speck in the middle of the screen. Uh, so this lens gets super, super wide, which obviously is great if you're looking for a really wide lens. This gets a lot wider than the 24 to 105 millimeter that I talked about previously. And obviously the whole focal range is wider than the 50 millimeter lens I just talked about. So if you're looking for a wide angle lens, uh, this one's great. Now there is another wide angle lens I'm talking about in a minute. So stay tuned for that if you're interested in wide angle lenses, uh, because I might recommend the other one over this, depending on your situation. I'm going to zoom into 35 millimeters again. There we go. So the EF 16 to 35 millimeter F 2.8 lens. So if you have kind of a bigger ish budget and you're looking for a lens to vlog with or do real estate photography or videos, uh, really any case that you'd need a really wide lens with a fast aperture, this lens right here will be perfect for you especially since it's an f 2.8 aperture it's going to be super good in low light conditions and it's still going to provide a pretty good shallow depth of field which you can still see right here even though it's a pretty wide lens f 2.8 gives you a nice shallow depth of field which is super awesome so if you have the speed booster this is going to be obviously pretty much a 16 to 35 millimeter lens but if you don't have a speed booster and you just have a regular adapter from ef to eos m lenses this won't be an um, ultra wide lens. This will be more of just a wide lens because it'll be approximately 30 to 55 millimeters. So more of a mid range zoom lens, which is also actually super good even without a speed booster because a nice mid range lens like this 
Uh, super great for pretty much any sort of street photography or anything like that. Uh, but obviously, like all these lenses, I'd recommend using the speed booster. It just brings everything to the next level. And uh, this becomes an ultra wide lens again, like it was always meant to be. So for price, this lens I picked up used for about $350. Now I got a stupid steal on it because even used, this lens on average sells for closer to five to $600. And I believe it's a little more than that new. So this isn't a cheap lens at all. But like I said, this is Canon's L-Series lens. It's an f2.8 constant aperture. The build quality is fantastic. It has a weather sealing gasket. It's really just an all around amazing lens. I don't know, I, I don't know if I have much bad to say about this lens either. I mean, the f2.8 aperture is super amazing. You know, you really can't ask for more than that on such a wide lens like this. It's also not even a super huge lens. It's a little smaller and lighter than the 24 to 105 millimeter. But if you don't have a speed booster or if you're looking for an even wider, like super ultra wide lens, stay tuned because I have one that I use. I'm gonna bring it up in just a couple minutes here. All right, so I'm on the next lens right now. And this one's a little tough. Uh, honestly, I really apologize if it's out of focus right now because this is a manual focus lens and it's like literally 15 feet away from me right now. So I really apologize if it's slightly out of focus. So this lens right here is the Rokinon 85mm T1.5 lens. Now there's two versions of this lens. I have the cinema version which has cinema gears and a declicked aperture, it's meant for video work. But there's also a photo version, so I'll link both of them down below depending on what you're going to use these lenses for. Uh, but both versions don't have autofocus. But this lens right here is something special. This lens just reminds me so much of a vintage lens because of the characteristics of the bokeh. Just how everything looks with this lens is super, super stylized. And I don't know, there's just something special about it. It's just such an awesome lens. And this lens is also tack sharp, especially if you stop down to like f2.8. This is an 85 millimeter lens, which is getting onto the telephoto side. This is, you know, a pretty long lens, especially without a speed booster. It's equivalent to like 120 millimeters, something like that, I don't know exactly. But this is definitely a telephoto lens. So this lens is amazing if you're gonna be taking portraits of people. This lens at T1.5 or F1.4 on the photo version at 85 millimeters creates such amazing background separation and compression. Uh, it just makes everything look amazing. Now the downside to it is it doesn't have autofocus. So for something like what I'm doing right now, it really isn't that good because obviously it's so far away from me, I can't fine tune the focus. Uh, to make sure I'm in focus. But if you're the one behind the camera, if you're taking pictures of other people or other things, this lens is perfect as long as you can nail the manual focus. Now, the only other downside to this lens that I can think of is that it has a pretty long minimum focus distance. For times that I wanted to get like product B-roll or, you know, like product shots, it's really hard to do that, especially on anything smaller than, you know, a few feet tall or wide. So like I've tried to take nice close-ups of cameras or lenses and you just cannot get close enough to get you know, a good product image. So if you're looking at taking really close up product shots with this, I wouldn't recommend it, but for portraits of people or animals or things like that, where you don't need to get obviously super close, this lens is seriously beautiful. It creates amazing pictures and videos. All right, so on to lens number five. We're on it right now, and I'm sure you can already tell this is an ultra wide lens right here. So this lens is the Tokina 11 to 16 millimeter f 2.8 ultra wide lens. Now this is the newest lens in my collection, so I haven't gotten you know a large amount of photos and videos with it. I haven't gotten a huge amount of use with it at all, but I'm already loving this lens. I just already know that it's gonna be one of my least used lenses because personally, uh, I'm into wide angle, but really not super wide angle unless I really need it for certain situations. So like I said, if you're looking for an ultra wide angle lens, this right here is definitely the way to go. I'd recommend checking this out. So at this wide of a focal range, f2.8 is amazing. I mean, it's gonna be really good in low light. I can't say it's gonna provide shallow depth of field because at this wide of an angle, it just doesn't really happen. I mean, I'll kind of show you what it can do. Right now it's actually at 16 millimeters, the most zoomed in it'll go. And I mean, you can already see how wide it is. So. You know, if I get this close, I'm like about a foot away right now from the lens. And the background is getting a little blurry. Not like super creamy backgrounds like the 50 millimeter lens that I had on here a little bit ago. So I really wouldn't buy this for anything like that, you know, for like interviews or definitely not portraits of people because you can probably already see how distorted I am. You know, my arm, I mean, 
Well, my arm looks like it's 30 feet long right now. I, th this isn't good for taking pictures of humans because it makes people look really weird uh, and long and distorted. Long story short, don't use this for portraits. F2.8 aperture, super good flow light, super wide, and it's actually a little surprising. So I wanna make sure you understand right off the bat, this lens is not a full frame lens. I basically talk about how I use the Viltrox speed booster with all these lenses. This lens right here is not meant to use a speed booster with because it's meant for an APS-C camera, which is what the M50 is. However, I am using this with the Viltrox speed booster right now. So hypothetically, you're gonna get a lot of vignetting on an APS-C lens with a full frame camera. And so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out uh, all the way to 11 millimeters to show you what happens. So right now there's no vignetting. The corners look perfect. Uh, it really, it looks great right here. So I'm gonna slowly zoom out, make sure you watch the corners. So there we go. I'm at 11 millimeters right now. This is 11 millimeters. This is ridiculous wide. Like. <laughs> this is like unbelievably wide, but I'm sure you can see the corners here. They have a, quite a bit of vignetting. It's really deep and it's nothing that you can even correct at 11 millimeters. But it's actually crazy to me that you can get this wide with this amount of vignetting. I think usually on an APS-C lens, it would be like all the way like right here. Like it'd be like a circle, you know, this big in the center of the camera. But this, it's pretty much just the corners that are getting a lot of vignetting. And even if you zoom in to, let's see, I think right there, 13. This is at 13 millimeters. There's barely any vignetting. I see a little bit, but that's something that you could probably correct in post. So this is 13 millimeter full frame equivalent lens right here. This is stupid wide. And the best part is this lens costs used around $300 or a little bit less. And I think new it's like just over $300. So this is a super cheap lens. And just as a comparison, there's a Canon brand 11 to 24 millimeter, I believe lens. I'll kind of put it up on the screen right now. I don't know the exact price off my head, but obviously you just saw it. That thing is like the price of a car. So for $300 or less, getting 13 millimeters full frame equivalent with a Viltrox speed booster, it's unheard of. I mean, this is just an awesome lens for special case scenarios when you're gonna need something this ridiculously wide. Uh, so either way, there is a couple downsides I'm gonna quick bring up and that'll actually wrap it up for this video. Uh, this might be kind of a long video, so I apologize. And I really hope you found a good lens out of these five lenses that I use, definitely leave in the comments if you ended up purchasing one of these lenses. I'd really love to know which one you guys went with. The first thing is, which you probably saw when I was zooming all the way out, it's not super sharp and there's a decent amount of chromatic aberration and just stuff like that and it's just not super sharp of a lens. Which is understandable with this ultra wide of a lens at that low of a price, you know, it's an aftermarket lens. It's not a Canon genuine lens. You can really expect it to not be perfect. And so the other downside to this lens is the autofocus. So the autofocus itself is pretty loud. I don't know if you're gonna be able to pick it up. I'll actually try to bring this mic close just so you can hear it. It's definitely the loudest autofocus out of all these lenses that I talked about today. I don't know how much that you picked up, but the autofocus is pretty loud in this and it's not super fast. So it's understandable because this isn't a genuine Canon lens, it's you know an aftermarket lens with an adapter. So it's understandable that autofocus isn't amazing, but also at this ultra wide of an angle, you pretty much can use manual focus most of the time because a lot of the frame is gonna be in focus at once. So isn't something huge that you need to worry about. And once the autofocus locks on, it stays pretty locked on. But I just wanna bring that out there, that the autofocus is pretty loud and it's not super amazingly fast or perfect or anything like that. Besides those downsides, this lens is super awesome. It's super fun to mess around with. I mean, look at that. It's ridiculous how wide this lens is. So either way, that wraps up this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope this helped you out. If it did, go down and drop a like and feel free to subscribe to my channel. And I hope you have a good morning or afternoon or night, whenever you're watching this and I'll catch you in the next video.